Hi and welcome to this ADF Insider Series. My name is Grant Rawl and I'm Director of Product Management in Oracle's Application Development Tools team. So here we're going to have a look at how you can build an ADF mobile application to access information via REST services. So let's have a look. So I'm going to start with a very quick recap of the technologies involved and then I'm going to show that from an ADF mobile application, so running on a smartphone or a tablet, how you can call a REST service using the URL data control and how you can also call from a mobile application a REST service using the REST adapter. A REST adapter is just a Java API that lets you write code to call a remote REST service. So a quick recap. ADF Mobile is our technology for building on-device native applications for iOS and Android using technology based around Oracle ADF and Java. Now this is the architecture diagram but the main point I want to focus is on the, the highlighted red container. This is your ADF Mobile native application that's running on an example I'm going to show is an Android uh, tablet and from that application we're going to access some data or business services via a REST web service. So simplifying the diagram, here we have from the mobile application we're going to issue an HTTP uh, GET request to get a list of products. And the REST web service will respond with an XML payload which will represent my list of products that I want to display on the mobile device. I'll then do some manipulation. I might want to order some of those products. And so once I order, I'll be issuing an HTTP POST request. And that will call this REST web service in order to post the order with some supporting information about the order that we're posting. So let's briefly look at the anatomy of a, a REST service. So basically a REST service is just a, new, a URI. So we have a a machine name, then a resource. Um, we can also pass a parameter. So as part of that URI, we could have uh, ID equals a particular value or product or order number equals a particular value, which helps us uh, decide which piece of information we want to, to deliver. And the key here is depending on the HTTP verb that's used, get, post, whatever, um, the REST service will decide to do a different thing depending on the application functionality. So in this diagram taken from an Oracle service bus, if we have a, a REST service, depending on the verb, and if the verbs are GET, we might do some particular piece of processing within the web service. And if it's a POST, we might do some other piece of processing in the web service. That's up to the application or the web service to decide how that works. So how do we access this from our ADF mobile application? Well, regardless of the client, all we have to do is issue a, a GET request. In this case, the getting a list of products is an HTTP request. We have the machine name, the port, the resource. And because it's a GET request, the REST service knows that using the GET, it returns a particular um, um, data payload, which can be XML or JSON. And in this example, it's going to be an XML payload, which is just an XML document defining a list of, of products. The next part of the demonstration will be updating an order. So from the mobile application, I will issue an HTTP POST request. And there we can see machine name, uh, resource, and order is a particular thing here. And we have to supply a payload because I'm ordering some piece of uh, kit. And so I have to supply in the payload the customer ID, the product ID, its name, its price, quantity, and total. And so that URI and payload will define me issuing an order to the REST web service. So let's have a look at the demo and how we can build an ADF mobile application which will call this REST service using the URL data control. So here's a project we set up earlier with uh, two pages, products and order. And let's go to our view controller project. And we need to create a data control to access our REST service. 
So we give a name, let's say product list rest. And then we have to give details about the REST service. So again, we're going to give it a name, and here's the the URL to the REST service, and you can see it's a GET request. And just let's check this because if we put the same URL into the browser, we can see the XML payload that comes back from that REST service. There we can see a list of products. So back to JDeveloper, you can see it's a GET HTTP request that this data control will implement. And we'll just go through the rest of the wizard and accept the defaults. We're going to have parameters. You can save the XSD locally, and we finish. And there we can see our data control in the data control palette. There's product list, and we open up products. We can see the various attributes that make up a, a product. So that's the payload that's coming back from the REST service. And again, we can see that in the browser, name, description, price, etc. Okay, so let's actually bind that to our, our particular page. So our first page has got a list of products. There we can see at the moment it's just got a header. And in this area, we want to have a, a list of products from the web server. So we just drag that data control onto the page and decide to bind it as a list view. We have different options for that list view. And we can define which attributes get bound. And let's choose the product ID and the product name that we're going to show on this list. Now, whenever we select a list item, we want to navigate to the next page. So the action is go. So that's defined on our task flow. Now, the next thing we're going to do is use a, a set property listener. What a set property listener is doing is we're just setting up a value into a global variable that will allow uh, the current product ID to be passed to the next page so that it makes sure it displays the correct product. So we're going to copy from the current row, the current key, the current selected product into a, a page flow scope variable and we'll just call this uh, ID. So when we select an item it will copy the current row into the page page flow scope variable and in the orders page, we also want to display um, data, but this time we'll display it as a form. So again, there's our product coming from our URL data control. And I just have to add a little bit extra code here in order to set the current row. And I do that by defining an action binding. So for the product list on the product iterator, we want to set row key to page flow scope variable. So whenever we set the current row, we get the value from page flow scope ID, which is the value that's been set up from the previous page. So this just ensures that we um, display the correct product ID. Okay, so that's us built as product page. It passes the current row into the orders page. Let's save that. And we can deploy that to um, deployment descriptor here, deployment profile. And we'll deploy that to our actual device. I've actually got a device connected to this computer and I'll finish that. And that deployment should happen now. And given this take a couple of minutes, we'll just fast forward very quickly. Okay, so that's the deployment complete. And let's have a look at how this looks on the device. Okay, so here's my deployed application that I've got running on the Nexus tablet. So I've started it up and that's going to access uh, my REST service. And hopefully in a couple of seconds we see the list of products coming back. So there we see the list of products. And if I select there's the top product, product number 37, and then we navigate to the second page which shows the details. 
Okay, so we've seen how we can call a REST service using the URL data control. Let's see how we can call a REST service using the REST service adapter. Now, as I mentioned, a REST service adapter is just a Java API for calling the REST service, something we supply within ADF Mobile. And just very briefly, and I'll cut and paste most of the code at the end so you can see this, but this is generally what we're doing here is the first line is just setting up uh, the environment setting up the REST service adapter. We then have to define a connection to our URI and this connection name is something I will set up in JDeveloper. I'll set up a connection with this particular name. So the API knows that we have a connection to a specific uh, REST service and it's defined using this string here. And then I set up, well, the request I'm, in this example will be a post request. So here's my post request, and the post will be to this resource. So further on in the code, I have to then create the, the payload that's going to be sent for the order. And here I'm making a, a call to make order post, which is my own uh, method. And if we look at that method, all this is doing is using data that's on the screen on the ADF mobile application, product ID, product name, um, we are building up essentially just a string and that string is the XML payload. So you can hopefully see there that an order is made up of a customer ID, uh, a product ID which we're reading into the method, a product price, etc. So that's just building up the payload uh, via an XML string. And so once I've built up that uh, that string, I just call the REST service adapter send uh, and then pass the, the data string that, or the XML string that I've created. So let's have a look at this in the demonstration. Okay, so we've got our orders page. And on the orders page, the first thing I'm going to do is add a slider component. And this allows us to define how many the items we'd like to order. So I'll set a quantity for the label. The minimum will be 1, maximum 10, and a step size. And we'll put in the value uh, in a few moments. So having added the slider component, I'm now just going to take my order button and I'm going to add an action listener. So when we press this button, we want to submit the order and it's going to call uh, a backing bean or a managed bean called my bean name. And they will give it a class, simple my class name. And this is going to be in view scope. So it's only available for the current view of the current page. And we'll add a method called do order. So when we press this button, we will execute the do order method inside this class. Now what I'm going to do for the sake of brevity is cut and paste this code in here. And if you want to hit your pause button, you'll be able to look at the code and then maybe copy this. JDeveloper will just take a few seconds to um, uh, resolve the imports here. So there's JDeveloper resolving the, the imports. Okay, so the next step we have to do is I'm going to add one line of code which will declare a public uh, string called quantity. And this will be the value of the slider. So I need to create some accessors, get the set. That's generated those. And if I go back to my orders page and go to my slider component, the value of the slider component will be tied to that quantity string that I've just created there, we can see manage bean quantity. So I compile my code, that should all work out okay. And if I quickly expand this, you can see the code again, you can use a pause button to um, copy this code. There's a setting up the REST service adapter. Um, in this part here, we're getting the values from various bindings. And then we're calling the make order post, which is really just constructing a great big XML string, which is our payload. So the last thing I need to do is you'll notice there's one line in there, which is the connection name. So I need to set up this connection that will define 
the connection to our REST service that the REST service adapter will use. I'll put in the URL endpoint. Okay, test the connection. There we've got that connected okay. And that's the connection that uh, the project will use. I'll deploy that now back to the device. And again, this will take a few seconds. So we're just going to fast forward to the end where we've deployed. Okay, so we've redeployed our application again. We're going to select a product and move to the next screen. And now you can see we've got our slider component added on here. So if I decide that ski boot, I want to order, um, let's see how many of these. Let's order about 10 of these. And then I can press the order button at the top and that will submit the order back to the REST service. So let's have a look at that in the browser now. So we'll go to Google, put it in the URL of our REST service, and there we can see the order that we've just submitted. Okay, to conclude, what you've seen is how we can call from an ADF mobile application a REST service using two different methods, one the URL data control and one using the, the REST service adapter which allows you much more control via a programmatic interface. If you would like to find out more about ADF Mobile you can do so by accessing the link shown on the screen now. Thank you very much for listening.